While the pandemic has been devastating for many, it's also inspired a lot of people to look for creative and useful solutions. And Shrey Jane is one of them. He's behind this crowdsourcing website that maps COVID-19 hotspots in Canada, but now he's also doing it for Somalia. Oh, and Shrey's just 18, uh, just to make you all feel a lot worse at home. He joins us from Mississauga. Hi, Shrey, nice to meet you. Hi there, nice to meet you as well. Okay, so you and some friends decided that you wanted to help uh, in Canada in some way. So you you created a crowdsourcing website to sort of give us a sense of where the where the virus is, where it's going. Yeah, so we started off in Canada um, and trying to understand how can we leverage preclinical symptom data, comorbidities, ethnicity, and other types of holistic data to collect to understand what regions might be more affected than others. Uh, well, you know, testing resources may have been more limited at the time and early on partnered with the city of Montreal to be the official self assessment tool for that city as well. And it's flatten.ca in case people want to go check it out. Was this something you were interested in before? Did you know anything about public health, epidemiology, any of that kind of stuff? Not particularly. Um, don't have a extensive medical background. Uh, I'm an engineering student and working in the machine learning for health group at the Vector Institute of Technology, but uh, definitely always trying to learn more and trying to work with our team now as well as using every day as a learning opportunity to learn more about this space. But yeah, don't have a particular epidemiological background per se. Okay, so you, you did this and, and obviously that was for Canada and, and, and you know, kudos to you, but that wasn't enough. <laughs> you wanted to help other countries too. So now you are helping in the city of Mogadishu. Tell me what you're doing there. Yeah, so I think in Canada, we realized early on that, you know, the nucleic acid based testing and serological testing has improved significantly, meaning that we have other mechanisms to understand COVID here. But when we look at these lower middle income countries, the fidelity of understanding COVID changes a lot with the lack of resources. And sure. so we wanted to use self reported data as a mechanism to do that. And so We've been working with a humanitarian organization on the ground in Mogadishu called the Durable Solutions Unit, which is led by Dr. Hodan Ali, who's been an inspiration to work with as well, um, where they have 400 volunteers on the ground using the Flatten platform to collect data around health, socioeconomic, demographic data to understand the population, not just for COVID, but for the other crises that they're facing um, and leveraging this data as an opportunity to do that in the future. And, and to, I guess, let policymakers and their government prepare for, for the pandemic and, and other viruses, as you point out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think is, like, where else can this data be helpful? Now that you've got this platform, you're using it in Somalia, which is amazing. You're using it here. How else do you think it could be helpful? I think the open science approach of it could be really interesting to see how we can potentially make this data available to the world. It, what, the data that we collected in Canada, the, hopefully the data, you know, with the support of the uh, organizations we're working with in Somalia to make this data available for the world so that researchers in bordering countries in sub-Saharan Africa could benefit from this data for their COVID-19 response or other response efforts to understand that, you know, we know data is a common denominator in a lot of the different efforts we're seeing. So let's try to empower these local authorities internationally to do something similar to what the uh, government in Mogadishu is doing as well. You're not really 18. You're not really just 18. <laughs> I am turning 19 in a month, so yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope you yeah. feel proud of yourself. You know, everyone during this is looking for ways to help. I, I, it's amazing that you've put your your intelligence and your knowledge to work in this way. Do you do you feel like you're do, making a difference? Yeah, and I think it's really important to highlight that it's not just me, though. We have a team of, you know, so many different students dedicating their entire life to Flatten and not just myself. And um, there's a group of students, fellow colleagues at the University of Toronto, um, as well as I think just you know, opening up the opportunities for anyone else who wants to support this effort. We're looking to open source. And if anyone wants to join, do contact because we're looking to, you know, open source and continue to support the communities that we're working with. And it's flatten.ca if people want to get in touch with you and your team. Uh, and there's the, what the kind of things that you can see uh, on the website in terms of how the virus is tracking all from data that's been uploaded. Shrey, what a what a, what a heartwarming story to see uh, young people doing stuff to help this way. I'm 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 really uh, it's great. Uh, you should be very proud of yourself.
Oh, thank you very much. And thank oh. you for having me. Oh, geez. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. And thank the whole team as well for the work that you're doing. That's Sheree Jane. He's in uh, Mississauga. It's him and his team doing flatten.ca in Canada. And as you heard there, also in Somalia, incredible work by some young people putting their giant brains to work for everybody else.